did read quite a few books in this month. So the three star reads, I'm not really going to dwell on much because they were books that you say, yeah, they were fine, you know, but they aren't, you don't know how, um, how lasting of an impression they'll, they'll leave on you. Uh, so I will wrap those up rather quickly. It was not the greatest middle grade March experience for me. And I'm very, very sad about that because you saw my TBR and my library haul. I had so much enthusiasm for middle grade March. And what happened is that I had a sequence of three star reads and DNFs. I had so many DNFs, middle grade DNFs, and that can really kill your enthusiasm. But as I was writing up all the titles, I did have several four star reads in there and even one or two five star reads. One that I think I put as a four star read and now I'm like, no, it deserves five stars uh, the longer I get out from it. Uh, so not altogether bad, but it felt discouraging while I was in it. Uh, but I'm just planning to uh, allow more space for middle grade fiction throughout the year. Uh, and the first book I will talk about, um, I can actually hold up Ugh, if it will come out. There it is. Anne's House of Dreams. This was one that I started a while back. I started last year because you know that one of the the uh, series that I was really enjoying last year was the Anne of Green Gables series. And then in September, I read Anne of Windy Poplars. And then I guess it would have been maybe, no, it was August, I think I read Anne of Windy Poplars. Anyhow, I started this in September and here I am just finishing it by March the 31st was when I finished it. And uh, I felt extra spurred on to finish it when it was drawn for the booktube spin, um, which is done by Rick uh, McDonnell and he draws a number and I, this was on my list and the number was selected. Uh, so I felt spurred on to finish it, but this was <laughs> Struggle City. Um, and it makes me really sad because the character of Anne Shirley is so dear to me. I'm so fond of her. I think she's one of the best characters in literature. Um, and it's just such an endearing character who has flaws that are there, but you still love her despite that. And I think that uh, it just makes me sad not to love every book in the series. So I had read Anne of Wendy Poplars before and I was prepped for, you know, not enjoying that as much. Surprisingly, I enjoyed it a lot at the beginning and then just steadily it decreased my enjoyment. But with this one, um, it just basically the entire book was a struggle. And I, the, her writing is so beautiful. So there were still these really lush, glorious descriptions of the setting and everything um, that Anne is seeing where she and Gilbert have moved. Um, and this is, you know, their early years of marriage, but it just feels a little bit like Ella Montgomery has this routine where let's throw in, you know, this quirky character with baggage from their past and let's do it again and again. It's like her character, her side characters really start to blend together with one another. Um, and so I am glad that I finished it. And the reason I continue with this series, uh, I could you know, on the one hand, just be content to read Anne of Green Gables. Although I did really enjoy Anne of Avonlea and um, Anne of the Island. I keep hearing how good Rilla of Ingleside is. So I shall continue. Um, I do know even someone said, actually, I thought Anne of Wendy Poplar, so they would have said this, but they said Anne's House of Dreams was their least favorite in the series. But then I know some people, this is their most favorite. But I think for me, it just makes me sad. And especially when I'm, I can't help but compare it to Betsy Tacey. And I think the Betsy Tacey books only get better when she's older. And I feel like this series really kind of suffers once Anne gets older. Um, so to me, Betsy Tacey is obviously, you know, it's never going to be topped by the Anne Shirley series. Um, so the next one is Anne of Ingleside. I don't feel motivated to pick it up anytime soon. I'm hoping maybe by the end of this year to um, read Anne of Ingleside, but it's part of my spring cleaning, you know, to get these books off my currently reading. So I got Anne's House of Dreams off there. So that is an accomplishment. And then the whole slew of three-star middle grade books began in the year of the Boar and Jackie Robinson, Salt by Helen Frost, Kiki's Delivery Service, which it, it had everything in there that it should have been a four-star read, but it was so brief. It was very cute and fun, but three stars. Um, Frogged, which I will be talking about in a video with Peter because I read it aloud and I also read aloud A Nest for Celeste 
so you can hear what he thought of that. And then The Dead Secret, not a middle grade read. This was for my Read Along Most Victorian Patreon book club. And it was very interesting. We had our Zoom discussion this past Sunday and there was a range of opinions on the book. Pretty much everyone I think would have given it at least three stars. I think there were a couple people that would have given it lower than that. Um, it was a good audiobook. I think that's what helped me to get through it. But it had kind of these, you know, twists and turns that Wilkie Collins have has. Um, but it almost felt like a sensation novel that was imitating itself. Like it was just so over the top. Um, and especially when I read The Moonstone and The Lawn Lady and The Woman in White. I was not all that impressed, Wilkie. Sorry. <laughs> um, then on to the four star reads. So Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I really, really liked this. This is written by Ian Fleming, the same Ian Fleming who wrote the James Bond series. And I was, um, I was surprised uh, that it was the same author, but a really fun uh, family story about this magical car and these quirky adventures they go on. And uh, yeah, just some really fun scenes. It was a great audiobook. And then The Watsons Go to Birmingham. This is by Christopher Paul Curtis, and it's about a family in the 60s. And their trip, uh, part of it is them at home, but then part of it is their trip where they go to visit the grandmother who lives in Birmingham, Alabama. But this family really, really charmed me. And just kind of the, uh, I don't know, the bickering that happened with the siblings felt so realistic. And um, yeah, just filled, filled with a lot of characters. And I really loved The Watson Family. Uh, so yeah, I really liked that. Then I read Egraine the Brave by Cornelia Funke. And this was a fun fairy tale type feel where Egraine wants to be a knight, but she has to prove herself. And there's different crazy things happening around their castle. Um, her parents are trying to do a birthday spell for her and they accidentally turn themselves into pigs. And it was very charming. It had lots of fun, whimsical elements to it. And I definitely recommend the audiobook if you have access to it. And then I finished up the first four Betsy Tacey books. And I have been vlogging that. We have another vlog coming for you soon. After we finish Heaven to Betsy, we'll be putting it up and um, Rainy and myself. And then we even have Christy Lewis participating now. Ah, uh, yes. So it's been the most lovely, lovely thing in this year to be back with Betsy Ray and back in Deep Valley. And I can't wait to pick up Heaven to Betsy because the high school books, uh, definitely I prefer over the younger books, the early books. And then I read with Petra um, from the channel Petra U, Ronia the Robber's Daughter. This was a childhood favorite of hers. I knew about it because of the TV series. I really enjoyed this. It had everything that I loved about the TV series, but I was glad that I hadn't watched the complete TV series because there were certain elements in the plot that I didn't know were going to happen. And so it was fun to be surprised as I was reading the book. I love the love that Ronya has for the woods around her and um, the fierceness of her father. He could be quite a frustrating character, but I was ready for it since I had seen the TV show. I knew he was like a man child. So I was, I was ready for it. And um, it, it's a very charming read by Astrid Lindgren. And then I read Louisiana's Way Home by Kate DiCamillo. This is the third in her... This is the second in her Three Rancheros series. It's Kate DiCamillo. If you like Kate DiCamillo, you're definitely going to enjoy this. Um, it has some really bittersweet elements to it. Um, sometimes kids live in really hard situations. And so there are some really sad things about it, but also it was just a wonderful, wonderful Kate DiCamillo book. But it did not get five stars. It felt a little bit too, too similar to Raimi Nightingale. I don't know if other readers think that. I think maybe I was already starting to burn out on like three star middle grade reads. Um, and then I read Owls in the Family by Farley Mowat. This was a read aloud. And so you will see my thoughts on this in the next wrap up video with Peter that is coming. We actually just filmed it uh, right before this. And then one that I've decided, no, I'm changing it from four stars to five stars. And that is the Vanderbeekers of 141st Street. I listened to this on audio. This had, you know, the recommendations of pretty much every grown up reader that I know that likes middle grade fiction. So I went into it with trepidation because I, I just didn't want to, you know, have my heart broken and think, oh, I thought this could be a new favorite series, but I loved it. I loved it. It's definitely an extremely romanticized view of city life. Um, 
just from my time in the city, like people are really not that friendly. They like, they know everyone on their block and the shop owner. And I just don't know if there are any city blocks where everyone is friendly. Um, I'm sure there are friendlier places than the block that I lived on, but um, I think in general in the city, people like to kind of keep to themselves. I, I don't know, but all that being said, I really enjoyed this. Um, it had, you know, this family of lovable children um, who make silly mistakes sometimes. And it's uh, this like beautiful chaos in the household with all these kids. And I loved the parents and getting to know all the neighbors. It had me crying so hard at one point in the book and had a beautiful, beautiful resolution to it. I'm very excited to continue on with the series. I think I'll continue doing audio because I love the audio so much. And the fifth one in the series comes out late this year. Uh, so I love that there are so many in the series and I hear it only gets better. Uh, then another one that I definitely enjoyed was Understood Betsy. This is one that I hear, you know, people say, if you like Betsy Tacey, you will like this. It is about Elizabeth Jane, um, who goes to the countryside uh, because uh, of illnesses with her aunts who they don't realize it, but they're really stifling her. They want to shelter her from all the, you know, woes and troubles of life. And then um, she goes to stay with this family in Vermont that are kind of supposed to be like the like redneck relatives that her aunts are really snobbish about. And it ends up being the best thing for her. They, they um, think that uh, children should be more independent and that she should, uh, you know, know how to dress herself and she should uh, help out with chores around the house. And also she gets to go to school and, um, play outside and just really thrive for the first time. And it has a lot of funny things in it. It has some really sweet things in it and some really deep issues that it kind of tackles. So I enjoyed Understood Betsy. Um, it, definitely not as good as Betsy Tacey though, but I am extremely biased, granted. Um, then I read aloud Skunk and Badger with Peter. I really, really liked this. It was just such a delight to read aloud. So definitely we'll be talking about that in um, the wrap up, next wrap up video with Peter to tell you what we thought about it. And then I read a Cinderella retelling called The Ordinary Princess by MMK. And this will be talked about in my next Cinderella Chronicles video where I talk about um, Cinderella retellings and uh, movie adaptations and all sorts of Cinderella content. And uh, then one that was a big surprise was The Innkeeper of Ivy Hill by Julie Klassen. I, and I'm kind of ashamed of myself now that I could kind of just write off all of Christian romance or kind of all of like Christian writing um, without sampling more of it. Um, so shame on me for thinking, you know, I could never enjoy it before this. Uh, thank you to Elizabeth, who is one of my subscribers and recommended Julie Klassen after I said I had enjoyed Kira Dominguez's um, uh, book, Her Caprice. And this was such a delight. I really wanted something to be um, similar to the other Bennett sister. Um, so, you know, with Jane Austen vibes, but a little bit easier just to dive into um, and relax my brain. And this was just what the doctor ordered. It is set in the Regency era and our main character has inherited this inn after she has become a widow. And then she finds out that there's all sort of uh, financial red tape that the inn is tied up in and it's not nearly as simple as she thought. And so over the course of the book, she's kind of deciding what she's going to do next with her life. But obviously since it is a romance, although it's a very loose romance, it's more just kind of about all of the relationships that she has, the friendship, relationship with her mother-in-law, with her brother-in-law, and uh, it was really, really lovely. So I like that it kind of gave her this book to grieve and to figure out what she wanted um, to do next in her life. And then maybe in the next book, she'll have some romance around the corner because there are several potential candidates. And I just found myself absolutely in love with this story. So I'm very excited to read more by Julie Klassen. In fact, my hold for Castaway in Cornwall just came in at the library. That was her book that came out. It's a standalone and it came out the end of 2020. Um, I saw there were a lot of holds on it, so I wasn't expecting it to come this early, but I think it will just be one of my reward books during my spring cleaning. And I'm very much looking forward to that. And then a five-star middle grade read was The Year of Miss Agnes by Kirkpatrick Hill. 
And what I loved about this was this book is very much written from the author's own experiences as a school teacher in Alaska. And it is about uh, this small town that um, they constantly, you know, have teachers come and go and they'll stay for a year at the most, um, if, if that, and then they leave. And so these kids are really left with a very disjointed education. And uh, one day, this very proper English woman named Miss Agnes shows up and is going to be their school teacher. And it was a beautiful, beautiful book because it shows the love and care that she shows for each of the children. And our main character has a deaf sister who everyone says, you know, she can't go in school. Uh, that will be a waste of time. And the deaf sister comes to bring something to her sister one day at school. And Miss Agnes says, why aren't you in school? And her sister says, well, she's deaf. You know, she can't be in school. And Miss Agnes says, nonsense. You are coming to school tomorrow. And she talks to her mother into having her come to school and teaches her sign language. And then everyone in the town is learning sign language slowly but surely. And um, really showing these kids, if you work hard, like don't deny yourself these dreams that you want. And um, I will help you, you know, I will teach you, I will educate you. And it was beautiful. Uh, and I read it just in a couple of hours. I kind of wish I had just reread it, you know, there, there all over again. It was a beautiful, beautiful book. So a great middle, middle grade book that I would recommend. And then we get to four, four five star reads. Um, okay, firstly, I'm grieving that I have finished this book. I finished my reread of The Fellowship of the Ring. I blasted through the second half of this in about three days, I think it was, and I was not setting out to do that. I just could not stop listening. I kept knitting and listening to the audiobook. I splurged on these audiobooks a couple years ago, and I'm so glad I did now because I can return to them whenever I want. Good gracious, I, do I love Middle Earth. Um, I am a little bit nervous now. I remember getting stuck in Two Towers longer. So part of me just wants to just blast through Two Towers, but I also really want to do my spring cleaning. Um, so maybe in May or June, definitely June, if not May, um, I will continue on. Yeah, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful, complex um, world that is filled with all of these characters that I love and adore. And I mean, the language is just stunningly beautiful. Sometimes I feel with these traveling passages that I don't deserve to read it. It's like so beautiful, I don't deserve to read it. I remember my first read through the trilogy. I almost think I enjoyed The Fellowship the most, which makes me really sad, but I just know there are these traveling passages and especially like the journey to Tom Bombadil's house and staying with Tom Bombadil is so beautiful and Lothlorien. Oh, there's a lot to love. But then I know um, in Return of the King, obviously, so many cool things happen. So I will be curious as I continue on. Um, and I definitely recommend there's only one unabridged audio recording out there so far of The Lord of the Rings, maybe because it's so long. I don't know. Um, but it's very, very cozy. And I loved knitting while listening to it. And then another uh, book that this series has just been such a joy this year, and that is These High Green Hills by Jan Karen. And this month, uh, or in March, we did a live show. I had not figured out <laughs> technologically how to do this. And then I found out you could live stream through Zoom uh, and I was able to figure it out. And it was so lovely. Some of you attended and uh, gave us your thoughts on it. And it felt a lot more interactive. Um, so far it's been, you know, we do a private discussion, then we post it later and you put comments, but it was lovely to have your comments be a part of our discussion. And this series, it's just only getting better for me. This was the third book, These High Green Hills, was my favorite book so far. And I cannot wait to continue on because I love going through a series. You get to know and love characters and um, a lot more than sometimes you can from a standalone book. Um, so yes, and I'm, I'm happy just the reading mood that I'm in. The Mitford series is exactly what the doctor ordered. Uh, so yes, such a delight. And uh, the previous two months I did the audiobook, but also I would kind of save it until the end of the month and then I would have to rush the audiobook over three or four days. And it kind of detracted from my enjoyment. So I think also part of what I enjoyed um, in the month of March, I started out for about two weeks. I only read a chapter a day and it was so lovely to open it up and say, you know, what is happening in Mitford today? Then I got a little behind and had to read multiple chapters um, for several days. But I really like that. So this month, I'm filming this on April 1st. I want to read a chapter uh, a day and really looking forward to that. 
Um, so yes, the live show for that I posted on Instagram is going to be on Friday, April 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I look forward to seeing those of you participating in a year in Mitford there. And then lastly, then I read The King's General by Daphne du Maurier. And this was part of the uh, Stitch and Listen project that I hosted with Natalie from Curious Reader and Emma from A Cup Full of Books. And we had so much fun reading this together. We had a boxer group going. And I will show you my knitting progress. I said I was going to make a blanket. I thought about vlogging this and then I realized I listen to my audiobook with my phone and I film with my phone. So that couldn't really work. <laughs> um, so anyhow, here it is. It is a chevron pattern. I'll spread, it, spread it out there so you can see it better. I just love how that looks and it looks, um, it looks really complicated, but it's complicated, but it's really not. It's only two sets of 10 stitches. There's an increase set and a decrease set. And I just love how it looks. Um, so I don't, it's a little hard to show you how long it is. This is how long it is. And I didn't realize it's almost as wide as my king bed. So <laughs> that is very wide. Oh, maybe that's, so it's about as long as like half a bed. Um, so now tragic news. And that is that this beautiful, beautiful slate blue is the name of it color is discontinued. Joanne Fabrics, it's if you are not from the States, that's like one of the major craft stores here. And I only got two skeins of this and I'm kicking myself like I should have bought four, I think is what I should have bought. I have checked the website, been stalking the website. It is just, it's gone. It is gone, gone, gone. So I decided, you know what? It's just, it is what it is. And I don't want to make it like this. It would just be like a very weird throw. Um, so I have opted then um, to keep the oatmeal color, but have 10 stripes with this slate blue. And then I'll do 10 stripes with a really pretty, um, it's not a navy blue. It's like, and it's not cobalt. It's hard to explain, but it's like a, a really rich, um, almost like metallic navy blue. I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Um, maybe in my, I don't know, maybe in my April wrap up, I'll show it. Um, but this obviously this was uh, done a lot more than just the King's general. This takes a long time, but it's so mindless. It's been the most fun. So I went ahead and I got materials for another um, that I'm making. I'll just make for a friend because I have had so much fun. What happened for me for a long time with knitting is I would pick these two challenging of projects and garments that I didn't know if they were going to fit me right. And but a blanket, good gracious, so fun. But obviously, you know, it's not the cheapest thing to make. <laughs> so yes, I'm extremely happy with this. And it's going to be a big, chunky blanket to have around the house. I'm loving it. Um, okay, then lastly, one of the definite highlights of the month for me, and it was a middle grade read, and that was Miracles on Maple Hill by Virginia Sorensen. And the reason this was such a highlight is that I hosted, along with Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads, Mary from Happily Ever Esh, um, Taylor from The Babbling Bee, Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, Emma from Bookish Princess, and Jess from Dickens and Docs on Instagram. We hosted a uh, read along of it and it culminated with a zoom book discussion and we had really lovely attendance and also people were just so happy to be there to talk about the book and it was wonderful to hear people sharing about their specific experience with it the things that we didn't like about the book the things that we did like and i came out of that book discussion being like i love this book so much now because just hearing people draw out different elements of the book that i wouldn't have necessarily noticed on my own it was just really, really lovely. So I definitely want to do more Zoom book discussions with people because it was wonderful to share and to hear kind of our individual experiences with the book. Uh, thank you as always for watching. That is my massive um, March wrap up. Now with Anne's House of Dreams and The Fellowship of the Ring, those were not full books. Those were books that I finished but didn't start and finish in the month of March, but still, there's a lot to talk about. So thank you for sticking with me this long. If you have been here this whole time, 
and I will be back with another video soon. Bye.